Sorry, I've got a football match, but Grandpa will play with you. But Grandpa's all old. Yeah, he can't climb the stairs to our room or anything. Uh, you might be surprised. A day with Grandpa can be, well, magical. What? Yes, this was the day we found out we had a Grandpa made of magic. Soon, we were showing Grandpa our toys. Oh, I love Mrs Ostrich, Elsie, and I can't wait to fly in that. Don't be silly, Grandpa. Oh, I'm not being silly. Am I, Jason? Not exactly. Just then, Jemima arrived. I don't know where to start. Jemima was doing a fashion course, and she had to make a prom dress. Can you play with us, Jemima? <laughs> Sorry, Elsie, busy. Grandpa will play with you. Of course I can. What'll it be? Captain Dumbletwit? I've got the costume. I'm going to get changed for football. Oh, Jemima, you can't do cutting out in here. A very important hotel guest is arriving. How about the kitchen table? But downstairs in the kitchen, Great Aunt Loretta was doing all her washing. Lucky pants. <laughs> In you go. There was no room for Jemima to do cutting out. Captain Dumbledore went to the rescue. Upstairs, Grandpa had dressed up. I love Jason's car. Yes, well, that car can go very fast, you know. How can it? It's not even radio controlled. But the thing is, it doesn't need to be radio controlled. All it needs is this. And Grandpa showed us an old black cap. It's an old black cap. Yes. And it's about time you both knew all about it. You see, it's a little bit magic. Magic? Yes. And when I put it on, it makes me a little bit magic too. Do you want to see? Yes, yes of course! Not a shrinking cap, Grandpa! Amazing! Catch me if you can! I don't believe it! We've got a magic grandpa! <gasps> a shrinking one! <gasps> There's no stopping me when I'm small! <laughs> and we found out when our grandpa shrinks, he can get up to all kinds of mischief! He can run so fast you can't catch him! He can hide in teeny tiny places and his magic can make things go! Like this! And this! But right now we had to hide, because Auntie Jules was coming! Grandpa gone for a little lie down, has he? Nope, he's in... He's in the Captain Dumbledore Why station. didn't Jason want me to say where Grandpa was? Jason, you're too old for that now, you funny thing, you! <laughs> He's not in there. He's in the vase. Yeah. The thing is, Elsie, 
Only you, Josh, and Jason know about my magic shrinking cap. All the grown-ups think he's gone for a little lie down when he's small. You see, when I'm small, I can sort out loads of problems. Jason and I have had no end of adventures together. Yep, but now that I'm kind of not around as much anymore, you two can help Grandpa, right? Right. I've got to go now. Good luck. So, are you ready for this, Elsie, Josh? Are we a team? Of course. We really wanted to be a team with Grandpa. Then we heard Great Aunt Loretta singing. I do love to see me washing flap about. Just then, Great Aunt Loretta's pants were blown off the washing line. Upstairs, I was learning how to pick Grandpa up. He was just about to take his cap off and unshrink when we heard... And they flew straight past the window. Oh, no. It's Great Aunt Loretta's pants. They've blown into the big tree in the meadow. <laughs> You'll get used to this kind of thing. <laughs> oh, Loretta, how are we going to get your pants down? I don't know. This is so embarrassing. The last thing Auntie Jules wanted was for an important guest to see Great Aunt Loretta's pants. But Grandpa had a plan. You two go outside and distract the visitor when they arrive. I am going in here. Captain Dumbletwit to the rescue! Captain Dumbletwit got into a spaceship and the lights flashed and it took off! It flew around the room and straight up the chimney. We had a job to do. Grandpa flew out of the chimney and we ran into the meadow. And just then, Uncle CJ arrived in Queenie, his boat, with the very important visitor. This is our very important visitor. A famous astronomer, in fact. Olga. Olga Orbit. What's an astronomer, Lala? An astronomer is someone who studies the stars and the planets. Oh, what a magnificent place for stargazing. So much sky. Olga Orbit was just about to see the pants in the tree when Josh went. Look over there. More sky. Sky everywhere. I'll take your case in for you, Olga. Do come on in when you've had enough of the sky. <laughs> you can never have enough of the sky. Take a look. Stars, planets, galaxies, meteors, universes, outer space. I do love outer space. At that moment, she saw something. She could see Jupiter, it can't be. Yes. Oh, galloping galaxies! It's a spaceship! <gasps> it's Captain Dumbletwit's spaceship! Oh, this is magical! Grandpa flew over the marsh. I had no idea Captain Dumbletwit was real. I thought he was just a cartoon. Rollicking rockets! You learn something new every day about the universe. <laughs> we must go and tell your uncle. <sighs> Captain Dumbledore to the rescue! Just then, Grandpa came back. He whisked the pants off the tree and came to talk to us. I took the pants off the spaceship. Call up the chimney when it's safe for me to land. I'll be on the roof. OK. And off he flew. But Wolfie jumped up and grabbed the pants. Oh, Wolfie, how marvellous. They must have blown down again. Loretta? Upstairs, Olga Orbit was going on about the spaceship. A spaceship? Not just any spaceship. Captain Dumbletwit. It's real. I saw it with my very own eyes. You might need to get them tested if you ask me. Oh, Loretta, um, downstairs. Uh, something for you in the kitchen. Let me show you to your room, Olga. Oh, the lucky pants! <laughs> I don't know all the fusses about Olga Orbit seeing me pants. She's clearly bonkers. It was time for us to call for Grandpa. Now, Grandpa! And down he flew. And landed on the floor. Josh! Pick up the spaceship so Olga doesn't see it. Unshrink, Grandpa. 
How do I do that? Cap off. Okay. Oh, well done, you two. Olga didn't see the pants. But she saw the spaceship and she thought it was real. It made her day. We're a team already. Teamwork, I say. Teamwork, is it? <laughs> Just then, Olga Orbit came back. Staggering starbursts. I don't believe it. Captain Dumbletwit. The real living and breathing Captain Dumbletwit. Oh, there you are, Grandpa. I am so delighted to meet you, Captain. Up until today, I thought you were just a cartoon. Oh, this really is the best hotel in the universe. But then, this happened. Come back here with the pants, you pants! Well, almost the best hotel in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> night at bedtime. I couldn't believe what an amazing day we'd had. Neither could Elsie. I love it here, Josh. Me too. And we have a magic grandpa. Yup. Does anyone else have a magic grandpa? I don't think so. Which reminds me, our new guest will be here any minute. Yes, he's a clown. Yes. Look, I can juggle, Grandpa. Auntie Jules had gone to fetch a real live clown from Sunny Sands. He was going to stay at the mill on the marsh. What will the new clown be like, Grandpa? Oh, I expect he'll be round and jolly and almost falling over. You mean all roly poly? Like this? <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Queenie. Queenie is Uncle CJ's boat. It's really called the Queen of Sunny Sands, but it's Queenie for short. And sure enough, here came Auntie Jules with that jolly round, roly poly clown. Except he wasn't jolly and round and roly poly. He was all long and thin and kind of stiff. Hello, Grandpa. Hello, Elsie. Now I want you to meet our special guest, Mr. Ravioli. Hello. Hello! I am Ravioli. Roly Poly Ravioli! Oh, very good name. I like the name. I will use the name. It's more clowny name with Roly Poly bit in front of Ravioli bit, yes? Yes, this was the day we all met Roly Poly Ravioli! Roly Poly Ravioli, I hear you're in the circus. Not yet, Circus, no, but I wish for to be in Circus. Y yes, I, I come and I show Circus my act and they will say, wonderful clown, you come and be clown here with us, see? Um, <clears throat> let me take this to your room, Mr. Ravioli. Ah, so you want to audition for the Circus to see if they will take you on. Well, I've got an idea. Why don't you show us your act and you can practice on us? Yes, yes, yes! Okay. Me think first. Me think. And while he was thinking, we heard... Oh, no. Tony B! Come along, Grandpa. We're going into Sunny Sands to buy you some shoes, remember? It was Great Aunt Loretta, Grandpa's sister. Oh, this must be our new clowny guest. It's Roly-Poly Ravioli. He doesn't look very Roly-Poly to me. What clowny things do you do? I do this clowny thing. And this clowny thing. It's good for clown, yes? I don't 
don't think so. I do much more clowny things than that. Now, let me see. Um, let me take you to your room, Mr Ravioli. Now, Great Aunt Loretta had ordered a taxi to take Grandpa to Sunny Sands. He had to go. I think Roly Poly's going to need your help with his clowning, Elsie. Now, I've got my phone with me. Give me a ring and let me know what's happening. And I think I'll take her with me, just in case I have to come back in a hurry. Okay. So off went Grandpa with Great Aunt Loretta. And Roly Poly was soon having tea on the balcony. There we are. Miss Smiley's best chocolate cake. Cake help me think of clowny things. Yes. But just then they heard. Uh-huh. Here comes someone who's very good at clowny. You'll love meeting him. It was Mr. Worps. Mr. Worps is called Mr. Worps because he's always having little accidents. Oh, whoops! <laughs> Mr. Worps! Elsie! <laughs> Let me introduce you to Mr. Roly Poly Ravioli. Oh! Wait to meet a real clown. Whoa. Mr. Whoops was a bit dizzy. Oh, oh, let me. Oh, whoops. Oh, oh. oh, how could I be so clumsy? <laughs> now that is a proper clowny thing. I try. I try. One, two, three, go. Uh... No good. No good. I am hopeless clown. You, you, Mr. Whoops. You go and join circus. You do proper clowny things. Me? No. Hopeless. I go pack my things. And poor Roly Poly went to his room. I did it by accident. I know you did, Mr. Whoops. I've put him off being a clown for life. I'm sure you haven't. I think I'll just go back to my toy shop. Careful! Oh. Oh, no. It was definitely time for me to phone Grandpa. he just arrived in Miss Smiley's cafe. Now, you sit there, Grandpa. Don't you go wandering off. Goodness knows what you've got in all those bags. I won't be a moment. I'm just going to the... Great Aunt Loretta never says the word toilet out loud because she thinks it's rude. Hello, Elsie. What news? He's leaving. He says he'll never be a proper clown. He's so sad, Grandpa. Oh, we can't have that. I better come back straight away. And you know what that means? Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa. Catch me if you can. And up he got. And without anyone seeing him, he put on his shrinking cap. You know what happens when Grandpa shrinks. He can run about all over the place. And his magic can make things go, like Josh's helicopter. But today, he was going to get on my Mrs Ostrich to fly back home. Now for some of Miss Smiley's chocolate cake, Grandpa. Oh, he is impossible. Did you see him go? I expect he's gone to Mr. Whoopsie's shop. He loves it there. Would you, would you look after my stuff while I just run and look for him, Grandpa? Back at the mill on the marsh, this was happening. Don't leave us, Roly Poly. I must go. I am hopeless clown. Never join circus. Never. Not funny, not Roly Poly. Too scared. Me go working. Insurance company. I was watching for Grandpa to arrive. And luckily, just as Roly Poly was about to leave, this happened. Whoa! What is Pony Bird? Whoa! 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 And a Roly Poly did a Roly Poly. Well done, Roly Poly. I did clown eating. I did Roly Poly. Do it again. And with Grandpa's help, he did it again. Brilliant! Rolly Polly Ravioli! You're so clowny! Well. You've done it, Grandpa! Keep going! I'm coming down!
comes roly poly. <laughs> At last, Grandpa's work was done. Grandpa flew into the cafe, took off his shrinking cap, and came back to his normal size. Oh, I've been looking everywhere for you, Grandpa. I can't leave you for a second, but you go wandering off. Just stretching my legs. Come along, we're late. Later, when Great Aunt Loretta and Grandpa got home, Roly Poly could not stop Roly Polying. Roly Poly Ravioli! <laughs> <laughs> Marvellous! Do some more! More! I couldn't have done it without you. I know. It was teamwork. Teamwork. Ready, buddy, ravioli! Wonderful. He's a real clown. Yes. Me. Real clown now. Funny bird taught me roly poly ting. Funny bird? What does he mean? Maybe he means you, Loretta. You did a tumble this morning that was very funny, remember? Ooh. Come to think of it, I expect you're right, Grandpa. I probably do teach him all he knows. <laughs> Roly poly ravioli! I got you some little things in Sunnyside. For me! Oh, very kind! Shoes, a wig, and a red nose. Well, now you can act like a clown. You have to dress like one, too. Yes, I might be able to do clowny things, but I don't dress like a clown. Let me help you inside with your things. Roly poly ravioli! <laughs> Roly poly ravioli! Roly poly ravioli! Roly poly because I've got to get back here to prepare for the egg hunt later. Did I hear someone say egg hunt? Yes, Grandpa. The children are coming back here for an egg hunt and a bit of a party in the meadow later. Wonderful. I wish I could come to the make and do day with you. But you can't, Grandpa, because you are helping me with sandwiches. Right. Come on, otherwise we're going to be late. You've got your work cut out, Jemima, because Belinda Lucinda's going to be there. Oh, no. Belinda Lucinda spoils everything. Belinda Lucinda? Poor Jemima. If Belinda Lucinda's going to be there, she's going to need my help. Not the shrinking cat, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! When Grandpa shrinks, he can run really fast. Like this. And this. into things, he can get under things, but most amazing of all is that his magic can make things go. <laughs> like my helicopter and our cousin Jason's plan. 
man's train. And he can even make my missus ostrich fly. Oh yes, Grandpa can get anywhere he likes. But today he was coming with us, in Josh's pocket. Hurry up you two. Ah, oh, Grandpa gone for a little lie down, eh? To get out of making the sandwiches, I guess. Come on! I picked up my pencil tin and ran. So off we all went in Campo to Miss Smiley's cafe. And Jemima said, I hope Belinda Lucinda doesn't spoil everything. And Uncle CJ said, Oh, I'm sure she would, Jemima. But Uncle CJ was wrong. At Miss Smiley's cafe, before long, everyone had settled down to make their springtime thing. But Belinda Lucinda was not happy. She was doing this. Mine! Grandpa was watching and he didn't like what he saw. My friend Connor and I were making egg cosy chicks. I'll help. Ah, oh, little Connor needs help with the glue. Don't be nasty, Belinda Lucinda. Some of the others were making bonnets and hats. Those are rubbish. No, they're not. Mine's the best. I was with Rosie and Emily, and we were making little puppet bunnies. They're magic bunnies to go inside the chocolate eggs. I love the idea of magic bunnies. <laughs> Who ever heard of a magic bunny? Stupid. Don't be mean, Belinda Lucinda. Concentrate on your lovely bonnet. But Belinda Lucinda grabbed some feathers, and Connor said, Hey, I was going to use them. Hard luck, I got there first. You need to share, Belinda Lucinda. Grandpa couldn't just stand by and watch for a moment longer. So he jumped off the shelf, ran across the floor, climbed up the table leg and hid behind my pencil tin. Belinda Lucinda was drawing a picture of a chick to stick on her bonnet. I need crayons. She had her eye on my tin. Grandpa got away just before she grabbed it. Belinda Lucinda, you should learn to ask nicely. Whatever. Right. Time for action. And Grandpa jumped back onto the table. <laughs> Just then, Miss Smiley came in with the chocolate eggs. All right, everyone. Here are the eggs, and we're going to put the little magic bunnies you've all made inside them. Huh. Magic Bunnies. Everyone was getting really fed up with Belinda Lucinda, but then Mr. Whoops came in with a basket of bits and went. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone went to help Mr. Whoops, except Belinda Lucinda, of course. She went to see if she could use any of his bits and bobs. Grandpa ran across the table to the crayon tin, and everyone was so busy they didn't see him push it back to my place. Quick, Grandpa, hide! Just then, Belinda Lucinda came back to the table. Who moved the pencil tin? Not me, I was helping Mr. Wood. Well, somebody did. It can't just move on its own. Then she grabbed it. Don't grab it, Belinda Lucinda. But I'm using it, and she took it. Didn't. Did. Didn't. Did. Didn't. You were the only one here. You must have done. Come in here with me and calm down. Come on. Jemima took Belinda Lucinda to the storeroom to calm her down. All right. We can all start putting our little magic bunnies into our eggs now. <laughs> magic bunnies are just stupid. We'll see about that. While well, everyone else went to the counter, I had a word with Grandpa. What's the plan, Grandpa? Who says bunnies can't be magic, eh? I'm going to need your help. Pass me your bunny. I'm getting in the bunny, and I'm going in an egg. And Grandpa crawled into the little bunny. Everyone had put a bunny into the half egg. Miss Smiley put the other half on top, and Mr Whoops wrapped it up. Here's one for Belinda's egg. Luckily, Miss Smiley didn't notice Grandpa's feet. Mr. Whoops wrapped the egg in yellow paper, and just then, Belinda Lucinda came back. Oh, we've put your rabbit in an egg for you, dear. It's the yellow one, just so you know when it comes to the egg hunt. I don't care about magic bunnies, or egg hunts, or girls who move pencil tins. I hate Miss Smiley's make and do day. <laughs> Through the fall and back to the mill on the marsh. We were looking.
looking forward to the party with all our friends. And the egg hunt. We were hoping Belinda Lucinda wouldn't spoil that. Uncle CJ had got everything ready. And soon, Jemima had hidden all the eggs. Keep looking, there's plenty to find. Well done, Dad. You've done a great job. Did Grandpa help? No. Grandpa's been having the longest lie down ever. I haven't seen him all day, Jemima. At that moment, we heard... Found it! Found my egg. I'm first. And Belinda Lucinda skipped off into the courtyard. She's in for a big surprise. <laughs> Josh was right. Belinda Lucinda sat all by herself eating her egg. Then she said, huh, Who needs a magic bunny? I just want to eat all the chocolate. Oh, you do, do you? Yep. Who said that? Hello? Hello? Belinda Lucinda couldn't believe her eyes. What? Was this a magic bunny after all? Yes, it's me. But... The magic bunny. But magic bunnies are rubbish. Oh, we're not rubbish. So tell me, you having a nice time? No. No, I'm having a horrid time. Well, you know what? People who don't share properly or be nice to everyone else always end up having a horrid time. So if I were you, I'd say sorry to everyone and be nice for the rest of the day. OK, I'll try. I really will. Good. And the first thing you do is to give me to Elsie and say sorry for accusing her of moving the tin. Which she didn't. I did. Oh. Uh, right. I will. So, Belinda Lucinda gave Grandpa, in a bunny, in an egg, to Elsie. You can have my bunny and the chocolate. I'm really sorry I was horrid. I know you didn't move the tin. Thanks. And Elsie ran inside with Grandpa as fast as she could. And Belinda and Lucinda was nice to everyone at last. Cut off, Grandpa. Quick. We did it. We taught Belinda and Lucinda a lesson. Well, you did it, Grandpa. I couldn't have done it without your help. Teamwork, I call it. Teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Grandpa, you're up. You missed the egg hunt. Everybody's gone home except for Belinda Lucinda. She's waiting for her mum. Did you have a lovely day? I did in the end, because the magic bunny taught me how to. Oh? How's that? You have to be kind to people and learn how to share. I gave my bunny to Elsie. I know. You can have this, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> enough. A kangaroo for me. Boing, boing, Making stuffed boing, toys was her new boing, hobby. Boing, boing. Yep, he's bouncy enough. Good. Now, what should we make for Josh? How about a rhinoceros? Just then, Josh and Grandpa came in. We've been playing in the meadow. Have you seen the time the children are due at the boomerang? <gasps> Sorry, got a bit carried away. We must go right now. Anyone seen the keys to Campo? Call Kangaroo, Elsie. Take it to show Bob. It will remind him of home. I knew he'd love the kangaroo, because it's an Australian animal. <laughs> <laughs> and today was the day for an Aussie afternoon with Bob. I found the keys. I'll get Campo started. Josh, Elsie, I'll see you outside. What's wrong, Elsie? Don't you want to go? I do, but I'm shy. I want you to come, Grandpa. Oh, I'd love to, but I'm not invited. I'm inviting you. You'll be OK, Elsie. I'm coming along with you. Bob will think we're really babyish if Grandpa comes along. Not if he doesn't know I'm there. Why did I come along for a while, just to settle you in? Yes! No, it's too risky. I'll be careful, and I won't stay all afternoon. Not the shrinking cat, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! When Grandpa shrinks, he runs about all over the place. He's 
zooms around and chases to a car, and it even gets into my helicopter and flies. But today, he was going to ride in my backpack. I've been sitting in camp over ages. Sorry, we're ready now. I see Grandpa's gone for a little lie down. I expect he's glad he won't be running around a boat all afternoon. Come on, let's go. So off we went in camp boat to go fight. Me, Auntie Jules, Elsie and Grandpa. And Auntie Jules said... Do you know why Bob's boat is called the Boomerang? And Josh said... Because when it goes out to sea, it always comes back. When we got to the Boomerang, we couldn't see Bob on deck. So we guessed he must be down below. Sorry, we're a bit late. No worries. Gave me more time to make our tucker. Tucker? It's Australian for food. I went out fishing this morning, caught a load of fresh prawns. Even took the shells off for you. See? Oh, they really smell. <laughs> it all looks fantastic. Do you mind if I pop out for a bit? I'm making a rhinoceros and I run out of stuffing. Yeah, sure. Elsie, show Bob who's hiding in your backpack. For a moment, I thought Auntie Jules had guessed. But then... Oh, I know who she means. Of course, she wasn't talking about Grandpa. She was talking about Elsie's kangaroo. Oh, you can't get more Australian than a roo. Boing. 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 While we were all playing Boing. with the kangaroo, Boing. Grandpa jumped out of the backpack and looked for somewhere to hide. And he found a good place, behind the musical boat. Tuck it time! <laughs> Come on, dig in! <laughs> so, while we dug into our tucker, Grandpa relaxed. And the relaxing turned into a nap. And the nap turned into a proper sleep. But we didn't know, because we were eating Bob's Aussie Tucker. We ate heaps. <laughs> Aussie Tucker's the best. It must be fun to live in Australia. Oh, yeah, Australia's great. We've got so many great beaches and, like, there's some really cool animals Do as well. Do you miss home, Bob? Well, sometimes. But then I just play an Aussie song and it cheers me up again. I've never heard an Aussie song. Oh, hang on. I'll play you my favourite on my musical boat. Of course. Grandpa was hiding behind the musical boat. I had to do something. I'll get it. <laughs> Grandpa, wake up. Sorry, but Bob wants this. What? Eh? Oh. Oh, it's you, Josh. Is Elsie all right? Can I fly home now? Yeah, she's cool. But we didn't bring anything for you to fly home on. Oh, no, we didn't. That was silly of me. A bother. There was no choice. <sighs> Grandpa had to wait for us, which meant he had to find another place to hide. I've wound the little beauty up. Let's hear her play. But the little beauty didn't play. Oh, no. Something's broken inside. Ah. I'll take a good look at her later. Righto. What other Aussie thing can I show you? Oh, I know. My lucky Aussie dollar. What's an Aussie dollar? It's Australian money. But the Aussie dollar had gone. I'm sure I had it this morning when I went out fishing for those prawns. Make sure he doesn't find Grandpa. I've forgotten all about him. Gotta be here somewhere. I know. We can turn into a game. Hunt the lucky Aussie dollar. This could be tricky. While we all started to hunt for the Aussie dollar, Grandpa did his best to keep out of the way. No, it's not here. I've looked. OK. Maybe it's over here. Bob, Bob, is it there on the floor? Where? Show me. This was not good. Soon, Bob was going to see Grandpa. Grandpa. I had to do something. So, I dropped him into this funny long pipe thing. Oh, no. He was safe. Bad news, guys. I lost my lucky Aussie dollar. Oh, no wonder my musical boat's broken. I've run out of luck. I think we should stop looking. The dollar will probably just turn up. I hope so. 
Oh, still, we mustn't get on a downer. Let's do something else, Ozzy, to take our mind off it. Maybe you could play us your didgeridoo. Oh, yeah, Ripper. What's a diddly do? Didgeridoo. It's an Aboriginal instrument. Yeah, it looks like a funny long pipe. Yeah, where'd I put it? Oh. That was where I'd put Grandpa. Bob started to blow down the didgeridoo. That's odd. I can't get a sound out of it. Ah, looks like there's a thingamajig stuck in the middle. And I knew what the thingamajig was. Hmm. Can't make out what it is exactly. Poor Grandpa was stuck in the didgeridoo. Josh, you pass me that fishing net. I'm going to try to poke the thingamajig out. No, don't do that. You might hurt it. You think the thingamajig might be alive? I'll tell you what, I'll take a real deep breath and see if I can blow whatever it is out. Bob took a really deep breath, then he blew as hard as he could, and this happened. <laughs> Grandpa shot out of the end and landed in the bucket of smelly prawn shells. But he was safe. All that didgeridoo's made me feel really dizzy. Why don't you go up on deck and get some fresh air? Yeah, good idea. My head's spinning. The minute Bob left, I picked Grandpa out of the bucket and put him on the table. He smelled terrible. Wow, Grandpa, you're all prawny. Never mind about that. I know where Bob's lucky Aussie dollar is, at the bottom of the bowl. I'll get it. I fished Bob's lucky dollar out of the prawn shells. I think we should go now before there's any more trouble. There's just one little job I want to do first. Won't take me long. Grandpa went to the musical boat and Josh went to tell Bob the good news. Soon, Bob was back below deck and he was really pleased to have his lucky Aussie dollar back. How come you found in the bucket of prawn shells? It was the only place we hadn't looked. Oh, we ought to celebrate. Oh, if only my musical boat wasn't broken, we could have a good old Aussie sing song. But of course, we knew the musical boat wasn't broken, thanks to Grandpa. Maybe you should give the boat another chance. Now that you're feeling lucky, it might work. Well, you never know. Oh, let's try. And while Bob wound up the boat, Grandpa found another hiding place. Oh, it works. My luck's come back. Well, sing Matilda, well, sing Matilda, you'll come a well, sing Matilda with me. And he, and he sang, sang as, as he watched, watched and waited, waited till, till his till belly boiled. boiled. You'll, you'll come, come a well, sing, sing Matilda, Matilda with, with me. me. Hey, Elsie, your kangaroo can sing. Of course, it wasn't the kangaroo. It was Grandpa. He just couldn't stop himself. Yeah. <laughs> when our Aussie afternoon was over, Auntie Jules brought us back home in Campo. I let Grandpa out of my backpack. Come on, Grandpa, quick! Oh, well, that turned out to be quite an Aussie adventure. I'm glad you came along. You found the lucky dollar and you fixed the musical boat. But I couldn't have done it unless you two had kept me from being seen. Teamwork, eh? Mm. <laughs> oh, Grandpa, you're up and about. I got the stuffing for the rhinoceros. Look. Oh. <laughs> oh, I think you need a shower. You smell like a prawn. To stay. His name was Teddy Goodchild, and he was only two. Look how happy he is. Such a cheerful little chap. He'll be just fine. We'll love looking after him. He can play with our toys, and Grandpa's too. And we can take him to Sunny Sands, can't we, Auntie Jules? I'm sure Uncle CJ will take you on an outing. Oh, that'll be lovely. Mrs Goodchild was Auntie Jules's friend. She was going to a bow party on Bob's boat and wouldn't be back till very late at night. Now, don't you worry about a thing. He'll be no trouble. 
Good child by name, good child by nature. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot to tell you about Mr Squeak. He can't go to sleep without him. It's the only time he cries when he's separated from Mr Squeak. <laughs> Watch this. Teddy. Squeak, squeak, Mr Squeak. Squeak. This was the day when we all got to say Squeak, squeak, Mr Squeak! Now we've found Mr Squeak, absolutely nothing can go wrong. Now off you go and enjoy your party. Yes. We've had to replace him three times, you know. <laughs> Be sure he has his nap in a bit. And in bed by seven. Mrs Goodchild left and just then Grandpa came in. Hello Teddy. You gonna come and say hello to Wolfie? Yeah. This is Teddy's absolute favourite toy. Oh, Mr. Squeak. Oh, Mr. Squeak. Oh, put this on. Squeak, 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 Mr. Squeak. <laughs> At that moment, Teddy took Mr. Squeak and threw him across the floor. In the hole. It's gone in the mouse hole. Well, off to your basket, Wolfie. There's only one thing for it. <gasps> Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa. Catch me if you can. Now. When Grandpa shrinks, he can run really fast and he gets up to all kinds of tricks, but he can also get into really small places, which was lucky today because he could get into the mouse hole and rescue Mr Squeak. Ah. The mouse of the mill had made friends with Mr Squeak. Hello. Could I have Mr Squeak, please? No. Oh dear. But the mouse of the mill thought it would be fun oh no. to chase Grandpa. Grandpa hid behind the corner and the mouse went straight past him. So Grandpa seized his chance and got hold of Mr Squeak. And soon Mr Squeak appeared, followed by Grandpa. There we are, Mr Squeak. Safe and sound. Squeak, squeak. I'm coming to get you, Teddy. Quick, Grandpa, it's Auntie Joel's cat. Oh. And Grandpa came back to his normal size just in time. Oh. It's time for Teddy's nap. Don't forget Mr Squeak. Oh, no, never forget Mr Squeak. <laughs> squeak, squeak. <laughs> Soon, Teddy had settled down for his afternoon nap. No squeaking, Mr Squeak. Elsie and I are going to make you a special tea later. When Teddy woke up, I went to the lighthouse with him and Uncle CJ to visit Mr Mentor the Inventor, while Elsie and Auntie Jules made a special tea. We thought Teddy would love to see some of Mr Mentor's inventions. Oh, Teddy, oh, oh this is my ping-a-ding-a-dong. Oh, so it pings and dings Teddy and liked the ping-a-ding-a-dong, <laughs> but then he saw something he liked even more. Cat! Oh, what have you seen? Cat! Oh, yes! Aristotle! Oh, isn't he wonderful? Mr Mentor doesn't just invent things, he invents words too. I'm babysitting him for a friend. While Teddy played with Aristotle, Mr Mentor showed us his very latest invention. That's impressive, Mr Mentor. It is spectacular, isn't it? What is it exactly? What do you mean, what is it? It's Malvolio, my marvelicious money-munching monster. What does it do? I've no idea. I expect it munches money. But it is, however, most marvellous. Mr Mentor often doesn't know what his inventions are for. I expect it'll do something, eventually. It just needs to uh, think about it. Just then, Mr Mentor's chicken pot <laughs> went... Oh, my goodness! Help! Help! What, what is it? Oh, what's the matter? It's half past five chickens. I'm late. I'm most spectacularly late. I'm due at a meeting of the most remarkable inventors in the universe. Oh, dear. Time to go, Teddy. It was half past five chickens. And Mr Mentor was panicking. Don't panic, Mr Mentor. Oh, I'm not panicking. Oh, Aristotle, look after the lighthouse for me. Oh, now, where's my door key? Oh, dear. Oh, sorry to rush you. Uh, oh, but wait a minute. I've got to take Malvolio with me. Oh, Josh. So, Mr key. Mentor picked up Malvolio, the marvellous money-munching monster. Oh, Josh, we must keep Aristotle safe. Oh. 
when we got back to the mill, Teddy had his special tea, made by Elsie and Auntie Jules. And soon, he was all ready for bed. Grandpa was showing Teddy his favourite old toy. You know what, Teddy? This is Fred Bear. I couldn't go to sleep when I was little without Fred Bear. Just like you and Mr Squeak, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr Squeak? Where's Mr Squeak? Um, Mr Squeak? Um, I don't know. Grandpa quickly decided to sing to Teddy while we looked um, for Mr Squeak. I'll tell you what, Teddy. Why don't you and I go upstairs and have a little sing song, eh? We didn't want Teddy to know that Mr Squeak was missing. We can't have lost him. We all started looking everywhere for Mr Squeak while Grandpa occupied Teddy. Maybe he's in the mouse hall. It's not funny, CJ. Then Elsie blurted out. Oh, I can't find Mr Squeak anywhere. And Teddy oh. must have heard her and started to cry. Elsie! Maybe Mr Squeak is in the kitchen. Oh, yes, he must be in the kitchen. Where did we last see him? Just think back. Think! He had him... He had him in the lighthouse, remember? Oh no, and we had to leave quickly, didn't we? I'll go right away. But Mr Mentor's not there. He's gone to a meeting with the most remarkable inventors in the universe. Oh no! What are we going to do? You go and tell Grandpa. And I winked at Elsie. Oh, we'll keep looking. I'll go and tell Grandpa. And she winked back, kind of. I'm going to tell Grandpa. We were sure that Grandpa would have an idea that would save the day. Wait, yes, don't you worry. Oh. Auntie Jules was trying to comfort Teddy. He was not a happy boy. There's nothing for it, Elsie. If the lighthouse is all locked up, someone has to go in through that window. And that someone is me. And for the second time that day, Grandpa shrank. He jumped on Gordon the seagull and flew out of the balcony window. Where's Grandpa? Gone for an early night, I suppose. Well, he won't get much sleep if that goes on. I'll take him some tea. No! Let's keep looking for Mr Squeak. You look in here and we'll go to the meadow. Whoa, steady on, Gordon. There's a good seagull. Meanwhile, Grandpa flew into the lighthouse on Gordon and landed. And guess what? Aristotle had a new friend. Mr Squeak! Hello there, Puss. I've come for Mr Squeak. Aristotle didn't want Grandpa to have the mouse, so he needed a plan. Tell you what, Puss. Why don't you play with me instead? So Grandpa ran and Aristotle chased him. Have so much. Cheerio. And he tied him by his tail to Gordon. Then he took off and flew out of the window. We were waiting outside for Grandpa to come back, but we didn't have to wait long. Look. Oh. Grandpa! Elsie rescued Mr Squeak and I picked up Grandpa and put him in my pocket. Grandpa! He was in the courtyard? Yep, with Gordon. Oh, well done, both of you. Thank goodness. We should get some peace at last. I can't believe Grandpa has slept through all this crying. I quickly put Grandpa down on the floor. He took off his cap and came back to his normal size. Oh, oh good job, team. <laughs> yeah, that's what we are. Teamwork. Teamwork. <laughs> Teddy had stopped crying. Squeak, squeak, Mr. Squeak. Squeak, squeak. <laughs> <laughs> I'd better get to my room because I've been sleeping through all this crying, remember? We were still up when Mrs. Goodchild came home from the party. Teddy was no trouble at all, was he? No. no. Oh, I knew it. And the party was 
wonderful. There was even singing. Bob started to sing. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Waltzing Matilda, waltzing Matilda, who'll come a waltzing Matilda? Oh, sorry, I don't want to wake Grandpa. Oh, I shouldn't worry about Grandpa. Oh no, Grandpa can sleep through anything. <laughs> visitors at the mill on the marsh this weekend, Uncle CJ had got into Campo to go to Sunny Sands. He was going to buy some wool for Auntie Jules, because knitting was her new hobby, as you can see. She'd knitted things for everyone, woolly hats and gloves and scarves, and hot water bottle covers that looked like vegetables. Look at this! Oh, that's very original, Jules. I know. And these, Grandpa, these are for you. <gasps> Ta-da! Bed socks. Bed socks? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but they're wonderful. <laughs> I know. Yes, everything was woolly today. We were spending a day in woolly wonderland. We heard someone calling. I know that voice. It was Mr. Yomper Stomper. Mr. Mr. Yomper Stomper. Stomper. Riddle dee ree, riddle dee ree. It's a rambler's life for me. Up in the mountains and down in the dales, rivers and waterfalls, valleys and vales, yomping and stomping through England and Wales, rambling and gambling free. Mr. Yomper Stomper always sings when he arrives. Mrs. Ostrich heard your singing. Oh, hello, Elsie. Hello, Mrs. Ostrich. You're always so cheerful, Mr. Yomper Stomper. Happy as a lark, me, Grandpa. Oh, and look, here's what I've spotted today in the way of flora and fauna. Which means plants and animals. Squirrel, rabbit, pine cone, oh, and a small brown thing, I mean, that, that might be a nut. Well, this is a very good day to go on a nature ramble, Mr. Yomper Stomper, because it says in the Sunny Sands Gazette that there's a huge caterpillar on the loose. Brittle dee ree, the, the giant woolly carpet caterpillar. I think it might be called that because it looks like a giant woolly carpet. Really? I would love to get a photo of that. It, I could start a collection of nature ramble photos called Extraordinary Creepy Crawly Things That Look A Bit Like Carpets. You could, Mr. Yomper Stomper. What fun! I could easily take up rambling as a hobby. In fact, why don't we go outside now and see if we can spot the giant woolly carpet caterpillar? That is a great idea! Come on, Jules! We'll come too! I bet Mrs. Ostrich can find it. I think I'll go and watch from upstairs. So, we all started looking. Then suddenly, Mr. Yomper Stomper cried. Jules! Jules! Come quick! Something has been nibbling your bellies, Perennis! That's the Latin name for a daisy. Mr. Yumper Stumper always uses Latin names for plants. Gracious! Something very hungry has been nibbling my bellies, Perennis! I take this as a sign that the ginormous carpety caterpillar is on the loose! Right here! Grandpa was watching from the balcony. There's a hungry caterpillar here somewhere, Grandpa! Find it, Elsie! Find it! And just then, we did! It's here! Look! I want to get a picture! Out the way! I need to get a picture! Oh. But the ginormous carpet caterpillar was scared. Fiddle-dee-fee! It's gone down the hall! All my fault! I scared him! I'm sure he'll be fine, Mr Yomper Stomper. Come on, let's go inside. To Grandpa. So he ran upstairs to find Grandpa. Grandpa, Grandpa! The ginormous carpety caterpillar's gone down the rabbit hole. I know. I'm going to rescue him. But he's gone right down. You can't reach him. I think I will. <gasps> Not the shrinking cat, Grandpa! Catch me if you can. When Grandpa shrinks, there's no stopping him. <laughs> He can hide in all kinds of tiny places. And he can get under strange things. And his magic can make things go. Like the car. And Gordon, the toy seagull. And our cousin Jason's plane. 
He can even make an ostrich fly. And today, that's what he did. Where's Grandpa? Here he is! He was on Mrs Ostrich. He took off and flew out of the window. And he landed in the meadow. Got off and down the rabbit hole he went. Ah, Mr Twitch Whiskers. Sorry to crash in on you like this. I don't suppose you've seen a caterpillar that looks like a woolly carpet, have you? I'll take that as a no. I'll, I'll, I'll have a look down here. And Grandpa set off to search for the caterpillar. Caterpillar! Woolly caterpillar! Where are you? Mr Twitch Whiskers followed. Ah, there you are. Oh, and here's Mr Twitch Whiskers too. He's not looking very happy. I think we better get out of here. Follow me. And Grandpa showed the caterpillar the way out of the rabbit hole. We were watching from the balcony. There he is. Come down, you two, and bring me a bed sock. A bed sock? Oh, cheer up, Mr Yomper Stomper. I'm sure the caterpillar will be fine. Here, have a woolly hat. Oh, thank you, Jules. It, it's a lovely hat, but I'm still very sad I'll never see the caterpillar again. Oh, there, there, Mr Yomper Stomper. Oh, have a woolly scarf. Just then, we came in. I had the bed sock stuffed oh, up my uh, T-shirt. Let me clear up the wall, then I can make tea. Um, I'm just going to have one more look for the caterpillar. <laughs> Oh, dear. I'll never get to see him turn into a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> Have some woolly earmuffs. <laughs> Just then, the phone rang. Mill on the marsh. So Josh ran into the meadow to find Grandpa. The caterpillar's gone up the tree. He has to be left in peace to turn into a butterfly. Right. Brought you the red salt. Marvellous. But what's it for? Well, I'm guessing Mr Yomper Stomper will want a picture. Yes, he's all upset. So now we'll get one. And Grandpa crawled inside the bed sock and he looked just like the woolly carpet caterpillar. I'm going to tell Mr Yomper Stomper. Before long, Mr Yomper Stomper was back in the meadow and very excited. He was taking loads of pictures of the woolly carpet caterpillar. I love him. I just love him. Who's a cuddly little carpety caterpillar? I'm sorry I frightened you, Mr. Catacarpet. I have had an idea. He can come home with me. I can make it up to him. We can be friends. He can live in my garden where he can turn into a beautiful butterfly. I'm sure he'd rather stay here. But he'll eat all your auntie's plants. And Mr Yumper Stumper put him in his lunchbox. This was a disaster. There. I leave the lid like that so you can get some air, my little woolly friend. <laughs> Suddenly, I had an idea. Just before you go, Mr Yumper Stumper, can I download all of the photos that you've taken onto our computer? Of course. That way you'll always remember Mr Catacarpet. You know what to do, Elsie. I'll be back. Get me out of the lunchbox, Elsie. Then there's one more thing I have to do. What's that, Grandpa? Turn into a butterfly, of course. <laughs> Lovely. See you soon. Bye. Did you find the caterpillar? Yes. Josh and Mr Yomper Stomper seemed very excited. They are. They dashed upstairs. They're looking at the pictures on the computer. Oh, lovely. I've got to rush. Got more guests coming, so I need to make some beds up. I was glad she had a job to do, because so did I. I got some material out of the Bits and Bobs box and some pipe cleaners. Then I ran back outside. And very soon, Grandpa looked like this. He was an extraordinary butterfly. How do I look, Elsie? 
amazing. Then Mr. Yumpstomp came outside. Josh is just printing out those pictures for me. How exciting! Mr. Yumpstomp <laughs> picked up the lunchbox and saw that the caterpillar had gone. Fiddle dee fee, I've lost him again. No, you haven't. Look. He's turned into a butterfly. I had no idea it could happen so quickly. How lovely. <laughs> He looks for all the world like something I knitted. Oh, I am so happy. It would be cruel to catch him now. Can he stay in your garden, Jules? He certainly can. Now he's not going to eat everything. <laughs> well, I must be away. Climb another mountain, ford another stream. I might even see another carpety caterpillar. Who knows? And I'll off be went be Misty on the stump. And in went Auntie Jules. And down flew Grandpa. Let's get you out of there. And I picked him up very carefully and ran inside. We got Grandpa out of his butterfly costume and put him down on the floor. Come on, boy. Well, we made Mr Yomper Stomper happy. Can't have him upset, can we? You were an amazing caterpillar, Grandpa. And a fantastic butterfly. Couldn't have done it without you two. What do we call it? Teamwork. <laughs> Grandpa, did you spot the butterfly? It was quite the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. I couldn't agree with you more, Jules. Gorgeous! <laughs> <laughs>